Look, look it, it, Paul Heyman obviously has been in the business for a good long time. Uh, he's got a great mind for the business. I would say he's got the, uh, the, the the mind of a thoroughbred and the body of a guy who just thoroughly eats all the bread. Um, but he's, uh, he, he's like I said, he, he is a guy who is invaluable to the business. I'll just say that. Some people know that you briefly were in developmental a decade ago. Some people don't. Obviously, it didn't work out. What, in your mind, why did that not work out then compared to obviously what is working out in spades now? It's not in my mind. I can tell you exactly why it didn't work out. Um, okay. Without without getting too deep into the details, uh, me and the at the time head coach uh, from about day one did not get along. I was pretty much told from day one I expect to hate you. At which point I'm thinking, well then why the hell am I here? And so for about, about a good twelve months then it was. Now, L.A. Knight stating that um, the old head coach is referring to Vince McMahon, and he's referring to he's referring to how that there are major issues of that he had with that he had with Vince that caused this for him to uh, have some creative differences. You know, my thing with L.A. Knight is, it's amazing, like he said, how he went from going through all these hurdles to be being a WWE Championship match, well, undisputed WWE Universal Championship match at Crown Jewel against Roman Reigns. So that's, that's just an interesting thing. Um, I want to notate also that L.A. Knight, he, um, he was really, really close really really close to getting released for a second time in 2022 because he was previously in wwe from 2013 2014 as slate randall and he was on developmental brand but that didn't, he just got released in 14. so this is actually his second run in wwe and it's just amazing where he got at um it's a good res anything you want to say so far what you heard all based off la night Man, it's just creative. We all know we all know Vince is outdated and Vince just out of touch. His vision is just not dope anymore. It's not good anymore. So I'm just glad LA Knight dug it through and was able to make something out of nothing. Yes, yes indeed. Um so L.A. Knight, he uh, saying some good stuff so far, but I want to get back to where he's about to say, because he's seeing like he's about to get into the issues that he had with Vince McMahon at the time, who was head of everything, as we all know. So I would go back and we will talk about this again, talk about more about this and see what's going on with L.A. Knight. It's just me poking the bear and him you know, hating me and, and this, that, whatever. And it went back and forth until finally uh, my ass was out a year later. But, you know, I, I was told on my way out, we think you're very talented. Uh, we we would like you to come back at some point, but there's a stigma around you. There's a perception issue and we need that perception to go away. For that perception to go away, you have to go away. So maybe it's six months, nine months, a year, whatever, and we'll get back in contact, whatever. And true to the word, we did. And we talked in a year and I was supposed to come back uh, but at the time, uh, where I was working was offering me money that I had never seen in my life. And uh, when you're talking about a guy who'd been broke for the first 10 years of my wrestling career, working odd jobs and stuff, just trying to get by, uh, seeing a couple extra zeros on the page was pretty damn attractive. And so I said, I'm going to stay here and keep doing this for a couple years. And so me and WWE kind of did a dance for the next three years where it was like, I'd check in with them. Hey, you know, what's the offer? Ah, oh, we're offering you this. Okay, well, this company's offering me this, so I'm gonna stay. And then the next year it was the same thing. And the next year it was the same thing. And then it was just kind of like, all right, well then communication broke down. And it was like, all right, screw this, you know, whatever. And, uh, you know, I kind of went about my business. I think I ended up in NWA, then the pandemic happened, all this stuff. And I was pretty sure that uh, my window of opportunity was over. And lo and behold, that was wrong. Uh, and and I happened to strike at the just, I guess, the perfect time. And here I came in the, in the door and I, I basically said, give me three months. 
three months to, to make an impact, to make a dent. And if you don't think that I'm doing my thing, then you can send my ass home. And uh, well, here we are about almost three years later and they haven't sent me home yet. I, I don't think you're in any danger of that happening. Um, hey, you never know. Wait. Okay. Um, L.A. Knight, he stated that that he, like I said before, that he was gone, and he knows that they was talking dance around for the past three years. He said he was in N.W.A. and also T.N.A. wrestling, and also how. That he said just bring him back and said if he if it don't work to send him home. But it's amazing to see his grind that LA Knight was in all these other promotions and he even did a reality TV too, one of the shows that The Rock was on. It's amazing to see all of that, all the hard work he's put in, all the time, everything he sacrificed, and now he's here where he at. I just admire his grind. But um uh, it just it just shows that if you put in the hard work, you put in the time, you eventually get where you need to be. Some may take longer than expected, or some may come just right on time. So I just admire that about LA Knight. Right, and, and, and his communication, his ability to, to to keep the open line of communication with WWE was was was, was valuable and him actually landing the deal and being where he's at today. So, you know what I mean? Great strategy, great strategy. And if you notice guys, a lot a lot of the really, really ultra talented and the mega stars, they went away and built their success somewhere else. And then they got a chance to negotiate their way back to dominance. And yes, pure examples of that are Cody Rhodes, Drew McIntyre, Bobby Lashley, and now we look at LA Knight. And don't forget CM Punk. And CM Punk, I, oh yeah, recently CM Punk. And all those guys went on since they've been back, with the exception of CM Punk since he just came back. They have won a Royal Rumble and they've won World Championships. Cody Rhodes and Drew McIntyre Royal Rumble winners. And Bobby Bobby Lashley and uh, Drew McIntyre, the world champions. So that just that just shows great great grind that these men are willing to do to get themselves in there. And of course, Sam Punk, what he put he helped put AW on the map, literally. Um, but like I said, we'll get back to the interview and see what else uh, LA Knight had to say. When when that happened in 2013 or 2014, you left. Did that put a chip on your 2014? Did that put a chip on your shoulder to kind of go? Hell yeah! I mean, I already had a chip on my shoulder anyway because at that point I had been 10 years deep in the business and felt like I had been uh, uh, overlooked way too many times unnecessarily when I was looking around. And and and, and look, it's different regimes are going to have different ways of. Uh, staffing this place but you know it, it looked to me like they were just trying to staff up like a modeling agency for a while um there's a bunch of guys who had like really good looks and whatnot but like couldn't really bring it so for me it was just like man i'm I, let me just be honest I, I i felt like i was a sports entertainment or tv pro wrestling wet dream if i'm honest like i mean i every i, I got i got the look that you want i can talk the trash and i can go in the ring and i can do the work what else do you want Brooke. Recordings just got better. Hey, it's Dana from StreamYard. I'm so excited to announce. So at that point, it was just a matter of me just getting the attention of the right people, getting the right eyes on me, and I guess getting the perception right. And so, yeah, I already, I already had a chip on my shoulder kind of coming in there, but for whatever reason, one of the biggest challenges for me in the business, and this is from day one all the way back when I started in 2003, was just that people get a certain perception of me. I carry myself with confidence. Um, I, I sometimes will share my opinion. But at the same time, I'm also a pretty quiet guy when the cameras aren't on and whatnot. I kind of stay to myself. So I might just come say hi to you and then go off and just be by myself. And they're like, oh, this guy's a real jerk. And it's like, no, I'm not a jerk. I just, I don't know. Do you want to talk to me? Do you not, like, why am I going to come over and bother you? I don't know. So it's just kind of like, once people get to know me, I, I, I'll tell you this, when I was at Impact, biggest, 
biggest babyface turn ever. Bound for Glory 2015. Uh, some drinks were flowing. We're having a good time. Everybody thought I was a complete jerk. And then it was like, we're hanging out. We're having a good time. And all of a sudden, big babyface turn after this night. It just took a couple, a couple drinks and everybody being open and us talking and hanging out. And by then, it was like for the next three, three and a half years that I was there, everything was wonderful. Honky dory, copacetic. Uh, because like once people actually like, hang out, or I get to work with somebody, it's like, okay, okay, yeah, he's actually he's actually all right. Oh, thank you, thank you for throwing me that bone. So with that being the case, there's always been that challenge to where it's like, I just need to get my foot in the door, but people always have this perception, that always held me back. Um, so now, I'm finally got my foot in the door, and then that perception happens to be an issue again with the head coach, and then I'm out after a year. So I'm like, all right, well, I'm gonna go and just crush this. I think a lot of people would get fired and then they have then gone into hiding or just quit the business or whatever. And for me, it was like, all right, well, I'm not gonna take any time off. I moved back out to LA and I got right back on the horse and it was just like, all right, I'm gonna start working little indie promotions. Okay, uh, Impact Calling, cool, I got a job there. I'm gonna go work there now. Um, and so it was just making sure that I continued to move forward. And I always worked as though WWE was watching me, whether they were or they weren't. That is a key point right there. Let me pause that for one second. That is a key point. He said that even though he was with WWE, he said he always watched out as if WWE was watching him. I asked the first time I've heard someone say that. So he knew there was a possibility that he kept the door open despite the differences and disagreements he had that WWE may come back. That's how much LA Knight believed in his stock. That is admiring right there. Um, basically, what he's saying is, even though you may not be with WWE, keep your eye on the ball because they may be watching you or may not be watching you. And it turns out he was right. He ended up coming back. That's admiring. Um, I already liked LA Knight, but I even like him much more after this interview. And um, I could tell that he has what it takes even off, you know, off screen to be a world champion one day. But that's my opinion. You guys let me know what you think of that so far of the LA Night interview. Man, this is impressive, man. You're dropping gems. And that's a life lesson. That's a life note. You always shoot for your best you always you never know who is watching you know what i mean that's where everything you never know who is watching so don't just get somewhere and just go with the always be putting in 110 percent yes yes no doubt but uh with that being said we'll get back to the interview i'm just um i haven't stopped that much but it's just in my what la Knight is saying and i definitely going to react some more what he's saying because he says more important. He says very important things. 